All right, everybody, it is day 47. We are inching closer and closer to our day 60, which is the finish of the set. I know a lot of us keep going, but it's fun to kind of feel like you completed somebody something. So congratulations. Um, we are going to be working on the back today again. Um, I've been, yeah, really enjoying taking this time to focus on building the muscles through the upper back just to help with stability in the shoulders and everything else from there help increase postural awareness and stability for all the things that we do away from our body and our daily lives so let's go ahead and start on our hands and knees and turn your fingertips back towards your knees we're going to take a little stretch through the forearms so just kind of let your elbows bend back and forth however feels good for you and then turn the backs of your hands onto the ground with the palms facing up towards your armpits. And then just let your elbows kind of rotate out and in, out and in. All right, and then let's put our hands in a normal palm down, fingers spread wide position. Put your shoulders directly over your wrists and then rotate your ankles. So just move your feet around in a circle. Pick your feet up off the ground and then roll the other way. All right, and then just lay your feet back down and we're just gonna draw your muscles underneath the rib cage up and in. So tighten and contract underneath that rib cage. We're not rounding, we're not arching, you're just pulling in and contracting. So the more that you pull in, the more that you should be able to also feel the pelvic floor muscles start to engage. So we're grabbing deep interior core muscles, building awareness and the ability to just draw in here. Take your time to keep that hold. Can't really get a full deep breath of air because we're really contracting. And then try to keep that flexion and we're gonna hinge back into our child's pose, but hold flexion through that core, sit all the way down. Walk your hands a little bit further in front Push into the hands, keep your elbows up off the ground and see if you can get your forehead on the ground. So eventually we wanna to try to keep our forehead down, hips on heels and get a nice long reach through the arms with the elbows off the ground. Okay, and then take your left arm across to the right side of your mat and your right hand behind you and then switch to the other side. So now your head's up, just get a little stretch side to side through that back. And then the other way. All right, come back to your hands and knees and we will go through our planned push. So squeeze your shoulder blades together while you're still holding those transverse muscles flexed and then round out. So you wanna go for some flexion and mobility through the scapula, the collarbones, the shoulder joints. We'll go three more. Exhale, push, inhale to lower. Exhale, push, inhale to lower, and exhale, push. All right, take your right hand and set it behind your head. We're gonna inhale, twist, open, exhale, and shut. So try to keep those hips level, still hold the core. Just one more here. We are gonna be on a timer today. We're gonna try to get through three rounds of work, 30 seconds of work. We're on that other side now. 15 seconds of transition. So sometimes we'll have to take the whole 15 seconds to transition. And then sometimes we will be able to take it, push into your downward facing dog um, to get a little bit of stretch and mobility. I have a 25 pound kettlebell, a set of 15 pound dumbbells and a set of five pound dumbbells that I'm gonna be using today. And then I also am gonna grab a band that's attached to an anchor point to kind of add extra resistance for my bird dogs and dead bugs. So if you do not have a resistance band, it's not a problem. <clears throat> you can use no weight, just go body weight, <coughs> or you can grab one of your lighter dumbbells. <clears throat> so basically, eventually we'll be in our bird dog position, right shoulder over the wrist, your back leg straight behind. And if it feels good for you, you're gonna take your weight in front and then just pull back 
and push forward. So the leg is actually not going to be moving. It's just going to be holding steady. And I'm going to be using <clears throat> my band here. Once I have my hand in, my wrist, I'm going to go ahead and kind of uh, take a little bit of extra slack out of the band and then get my bird dog positioning, holding those transverse muscles up and tucked in just like we did a second ago and be pulling from there just to activate through that shoulder blade and back. All right. Um, so that's what the band will be for along with uh, if when we're on our back <clears throat> in a dead bug position. I'll be using it here. So you'll go behind and then pull behind and pull. Same as with the bird dog. If you don't have a band, grab your weight and you can just use it in conjunction with those legs moving. All right. That is all actually at the end of our set, but now we know what's coming. Um, we are going to be doing a weighted windmill. So go ahead and try to go through this with me. We'll hit 30 seconds on one side. We'll have a little bit of a stretch and then we'll go 30 on the other. So you're going to punch one arm up overhead and then you're going to have a kind of a little bit of a wide base of support just outside the hips. The hips, if your right arm's up, your hips are going to shift to the right and then back a little bit. So a lot of what we're doing here is getting into the oblique, but we really want to focus on the rotation and the shoulder head to set into the back to be able to get the drop while holding the arm overhead. So if your elbow's out here bent, it all puts the pressure in that joint. And that's not what we're going for at all. What we want and how this hits the back is that rotation so that your arm pulls back and slides in as you hinge down over the leg. So make sure you're not trying to just go straight to the side, but there's actually a push over and then a drive back. So your hips go back along with to the side. So you're gonna hit 30 seconds on one side, 30 on the other. If the arm overhead holding the weight doesn't work for you, you can just hold the weight down below or you can go body weight. You'll still get into that lat, you'll still get into that oblique. All right, then we're gonna take our heavier weight and we're gonna do a single side squat press. Again, this is getting into the back through stability and I wanna to try to find, really focus on using the work from the back through that serratus muscle underneath the armpit and then behind the shoulder blade to get that press overhead. So we'll go 30 seconds on one side, 30 on the other. If an overhead press doesn't work for you, I'm gonna have you do a lawnmower because I still want you to stay in to the back. So we'll get squats another day, but you'll pull your elbow in tight next to the rib cage. So a lawnmower is your alternate if you're not gonna do an overhead press. Okay, next up we have a back tap or a fly back tap combo. Okay, so you'll hinge forward. You're gonna get your fly, elbows come up, squeeze together, and then you're gonna take your hands behind straight and tap. So we're gonna fly, together tap so again for that back then we're going to go with our baby weights our t raise you want to get your chest pretty close to the ground back parallel to the ground then you're going to lift through the thumbs so the palms face forward pinch between the shoulder blades pull your arms to shoulder height all right and then we have the band stuff that i already showed you that's it here we go get ready with your weights for your weighted windmill and we'll get into it ready set and go all right so arm is up overhead you have that kind of little bit of wider base of support I went a little heavier for myself than I normally do just because I know it's a slow range of motion only 30 seconds I think it'll get here fast focus the core use the glutes to hold support and then really focus on getting that rotation into the shoulder blade. All right, both weights go down. Take just a soft knee, rotate one arm up, practice getting that rotation while keeping your hips level, and then the other. And that's it, now we get set for the other side. Here we go, hinge and press. I think our successive sets will also feel a little better because we'll have time to 
Get a little more mobility. Sometimes we're tight. A lot of times we're tight when we first get started. Lock into that core. Keep everything safe. So you got to pack that shoulder blade. And time. All right. Weights drop down. Elbows on the knees. Take that rotation. And then we're going to go into our squat press. All right. Take your bell or dumbbell. Just squat, press overhead. Remember, if you're not pressing, you're going to hit a lawnmower. Focus the core and the back. We're adding this squat here to just help get a little bit of power to get that press overhead. Channel the energy. Pop through that back. And time. Take a forward fold. Twist over to the left, grabbing behind your calf. Twist to the right. All right, set up your bell. Other side. Core locks in. Squat and press. Or you're in your lawnmower on the other side. Unconventional back move. But I really want you to see how we can incorporate the back to get that press, especially if you're holding a little heavier weight than you might normally. <sighs> Time. All right, lean over, take your twist and your twist. Okay, now we're gonna do that combo move, our fly and tap. Belly strong, find your hinge, elbows up, back down, straight arms, slide behind. So the goal here, after keeping that core majorly locked, again, pinch into those shoulder blades and keep the body still. That's our goal. We want to keep the body still. Takes work and focus, flexion and hold. Three, two, and one. All right, we're gonna go back into our little standing cat cow this time, elbows down, round, and then push your chest forward. Okay, grab your little weights. We're gonna do our T raise, drop your chest forward, belly holds again, squeeze those shoulder blades. Try to drop fairly slowly. Take your brain to your back. Little bitty back muscles. Tighten the core. Keep your pelvis and hips neutral. And time. All right. Take your hands and knees position. Grab your band or your little weight. All right. Get your set. Make sure. Shoulder is right over wrist, hip right over the knee. Your back leg is going to stay stable, straight, and fixed. Focus your core. I'm pulling with my left side, but I'm wanting to focus also the contraction on the right supporting side. So my tendency is going to be to lean back to get extra pull. So I want to keep my shoulder really high over that wrist and time. All right, let's gear up for the other side. Make sure you get your set shoulder right over the wrist. Now we're going to get our other leg back, level off those hips. Feel the back, get the pull. Focus the back. Grab those transverse muscles like we did at the beginning. My left hip was a little high. Got to keep track of that. Focus that back. Time. Okay, flip over onto your back. And we're going to hit up either the weighted dead bug or our banded dead bug. 
Legs are gonna go straight up. Smack your low back into the ground. One leg extends and pull everything together. Again, focus your back. Neck is relaxed. Belly super strong. And time. Perfect. All right, back to the beginning. We're going to start with our weighted windmills. And I'm going to start on my second side. So left arm is going to be up first. Right arm down. Find that base of support. Contract through the back. Walk into that core. We're working for stability in the back. So not as many flies or rows today, but focused on flexion, stability, and support. Time. Set those elbows on your knees. Rotate one arm up. Get mobility and rotation through that mid back. Trying to keep those hips level. Other side. Stability, control. My legs are staying pretty straight. Quads are strong and flex to support for the knee, being held straight. Lots of core, lots of upper back. All right, time. Take that little rotation. And then we have our squat press. All right, or you're doing your lawnmower. Squat, press. Feel the back. Have to channel the energy all the way through those legs. Get that core going. So at the top of that press, your core is supercharged. So your hips are stacked right over the heels. Time. Take your forward fold, twist to the left, Whew. twist to the right, other side. Set in, contract. Still get that low grade heart rate. Building some sweat and heat. You find your challenge. Notice what you're feeling. Stay in it. Time. Hinge over those legs. Twist and twist. Okay, we're going to have our combo. Fly and tap. Here we go. Elbows up. Then the arms go straight. Lock into the core. Feel those shoulder blades pinch together. Keep the belly strong and try to keep the body still. Just those arms are moving. Three, two, and one. All right. We're going to take a standing cat cow, round through the back, and then push forward. Okay, we're going to do that T raise. Pinkies together. Your back super flat, close to the ground, close to parallel. So if you're standing up higher here, and you're welcome to sit, if taking a seated position helps control and hold support for that low back. If your core is just not quite there, that's fine. But the closer, you can get your chest toward the ground. 
the more you're using your back. And that's what we want. The higher you are, then the more we're getting into shoulders. All right. We're going to hit up that bird dog from our band. Ah, three, two, and go. Shoulder over that wrist. Level off. Make sure you're not leaning away. So see if you can find the lat. That's that long muscle along the side of your back. See if you can keep your hips level, shoulders level, and core strong, right? So that low back, switch up to the other side. It's going to want to sway. It's going to want to drop. So you have to hold the transverse muscle super strong. Here we go. Back leg is flexed. Lots of core. Ah. Watch you don't start leaning back. It's a constant scan on the body. Check in. Hold focus. Time. All right. Flip it over. And you're going to go into your banded or weighted dead bug. Legs are up. Push your low back into the ground. Core and back here. Back, back, back. Focus. You have to check in. Focus the back. You can also find more back flexion when you kind of pull your elbows toward your knees. At least for me, that really rotates those shoulder heads and time around so you can get that better flexion behind those scapula muscles. All right, last round. Doing great. Three, two, and one. We have our windmill. So the goal is to stack up right here. Your weights should be stacked. Our arms should be stacked. <sighs> See if you can feel like you're grabbing shrink wrap and tightening it around the core, the back, the rib cage, the whole time. <sighs> and time. All right. Hit your little mobility, elbows in, rotate. <sighs> Rotate. Other arm up. Here we go. Feels like the third set. Focus. Set in. Find that upper back flex. Rotate in that socket. You have a lot of range of motion that's available to you through your Scapula, shoulder joint, that ball and socket joint, clavicle. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, elbows down. Rotate and rotate. All right, squat press. Or your lawnmower. Find your back. At the top of your press, watch that hip, right? I know I have a tendency, pop out, stack in, feel that core, the glutes, set your hips. Time. Hinge over, pull to one side, pull to the other. Whew. Okay, other side. Grab into that core. Here you go. Squat, press. Okay, 
Drive to the back. Perfect. Whew. Hinge forward, twist, and twist. Okay, we're gonna do our combo move. Back fly, back tap. Here we go. Control, we're not using swing or momentum. Grab the belly, pinch between shoulder blades. And time. All right. Standing cat cow, elbows on your knees, push your chest forward, and then round. And then we're gonna grab our little weights and hit up that T raise. Belly firm. Find that pinch. Definitely been doing a lot more of this stuff, this little upper back muscle stuff. Feel way more capable and in charge with these T raises. Maybe soon. Time to go up and wait a little, we'll see. Rotate those shoulder heads back. Find that pinch between the shoulder blades. Time. Okay, we're on the ground with our bird dog pull or hold. Here we go, find your setup. If your right hand is pulling, the left leg is back. Your whole body is in flexion and hold. And then get that grip and pull through the back. And time. Other side. Set that hand up. Knee. Get that lift and flex. Then your pull. So as my band goes back forward, my goal is to not release that flexion of the shoulder head. I don't wanna get it pulled out from my retraction. I was starting to lean back there, watch it. Two and one. All right, flip over onto your back. Weighted or with your band. Find that flexion, low back into the ground. Same as what I was just saying, you want to keep the shoulder heads down. Pull those elbows to point toward your thighs. Keep space between ears and shoulders. And then connect with the back and the core. Time. Woo! Good job, everybody. All right. Let's get a little stretch through the back. Still kind of working through mobility. So put your arms out in a goal post. So elbows are gonna be straight away from your shoulders. You want to try to drive the backs of the shoulders into the ground, your elbows, your forearms, and the backs of your hands. All right, so all that should be on the ground. And then rotate both knees to the left. Once you're there with your knees down on the ground, take your left foot and put it on top of your right thigh, kind of down towards your knee. So this is gonna help pull across that right side shoulder through the chest and then down into the back and that hip flexor on this side. 
these little twists are so good to take. Just keeping that flexibility. All right, unwind and mobility through the back. All right, here we go. Rotate to the other side. These twists, your pigeon, your figure four, those are the types of daily stretches that will serve you well. I think sometimes we don't do things because we think we have to do them for a long time, right? Even these sessions, they're not super long, but if you set in and focus and get everything you can out of each rep, it's actually much more effective. Generally, your effort level is higher, even though it's a shorter amount of time, because your brain's not worried about having to control or do squats or jumps or anything for an hour. All right, back to your middle. Cross your right ankle over your left knee. Interlace your hands behind that thigh. Flex both feet. Make sure your hips are level and stable. So my right leg is crossed over, and that side wants to rotate up toward my right shoulder. So keep it level, keep it squared off and held, then pull deep into the chest. So my point is something is always better than nothing. Even if you only get one stretch, one twist, it's all worth it. I also love, uh, I love reading social psychology books, like just how society works, how we operate. And as human beings, we end up doing more of the things. Okay, switch to the other side. Start with your foot on the ground, cross over, make sure those hips are level, then interlace. We end up doing more things that we think society does, that we think society thinks is healthy and important. There's this subconscious reaction if we think that most of society thinks that washing your hands after you use the restroom is a good thing, we don't wanna be socially unacceptable and break that held belief. Besides the fact that science has proven it, but so if the people around you, or if you are grabbing little stretches here and there, little moments of deep breaths, you know, kind of centering yourself and giving yourself some time. All right, drop that foot. Let's go into our hamstring. Just a couple seconds this side, a couple seconds on the other, and then come up to seated. I think we can start a trend of healthy behavior around us. Hinge forward. Find that stretch again through the hamstrings. And then tuck your chin and sit back. So let your back round, tuck in. Just sit right on top of those hips. You can, you should be able to feel a stretch all along your spine through the back of your neck. And then plant your right, uh, left hand on the ground. Lift your right hand up and then lean over. Oh, nice stretch through that lat. Other side, drop your right hand on the ground, left hand up and over, and lean. All right, so be around healthy people <laughs> and uh, be an influencer of healthy behaviors to those around you. All right, good job, everybody.